Hi, welcome to Conf42, Open Source Showcase. I'm Tom Payne, I'm an open source developer living in Zurich. And today I'm going to talk about Shenhua in 10 minutes. What is Shenhua? It's a dot file manager. Firstly, what's a dot file? A dot file is a generic term for your personal configuration files. They're where you configure and tune your tools like Git, your editor, your shell, and so on. They're generally very personal, and if you invested time in configuring these tools, then you generally want to use your configurations on as many machines as possible. For example, you want to share config between your home laptop, your home server, your work laptop, and your work uh, server. What makes Shenhua particularly interesting? Well, it's extremely flexible. It runs everywhere, Linux, Mac OS, even Windows, Windows services for Linux, Termux, you name it, uh, Shenhua runs there. It's, uh, it supports all the sort of variations you might want from uh, machine to machine in a very easy to use way. It's very secure. Uh, it has great support for uh, maintaining secrets on different machines and making sure that secrets not, do not get checked out onto machines where they don't need to be. This is great, for example, it means that your home secrets don't get checked out on your work machine and your work secrets don't get checked out on your home machine. And it's very cross-platform, as I mentioned, very easy to install. Why should you use a dot file manager at all? Well, if you've invested the time in your, uh, creating your dot files, then you generally want to use those configurations as widely as possible. It's great backup if you uh, lose access to your machine for whatever reason, hard disk failure, or if you want you're setting up a new machine and you want to get your configuration up and running as quickly as possible in a new machine. You get all the advantages of version control, checking stuff into a Git repo, uh, history rollbacks, we're all very familiar with that. And finally, the careful management of secrets. So enough intro, let's go straight into a little demo. This is a Mac Mini that I've just uh, just installed. It's completely empty, uh, apart from installing Homebrew, the machine is virgin. Shenhua is very easy to install. It's in Homebrew. There are packages for every major Linux distribution, devs and RPMs, there are pre-built binaries. There are, um, there's an online shell script install. It's very quick to get into the machine. Now, I've already got I've got for as example. I have an example uh, dot file repo here, which I'll now check out onto um, this new machine. There we go. This will ask you for my email, which I'll give right now. It's configurable, I'll explain that later. Okay, so Shane has checked out the Git repo. Um, we can actually see um, what it's shown. It's here in this uh, particular example. There are just a couple of dot files um, and a web directory. Uh, we can now apply those changes. Well, we can see the changes that Shane would make first. It's going to create a Git config and .NET RC. Shane apply actually causes Shemar to write those files. It does so uh, in a very robust fashion. And we'll see that then there's no changes and indeed uh, the dot files exist. Um, that's not particularly interesting. Let's show um, sharing a dot file to multiple machines. Here is a little Linux box using the same dot file um, git repo. Uh, let's say I'm going to um, have a tmux config. I want to get Shenhua to add it. Um, this has added it to the Git repo, but not pushed it. Shenhua can automatically create commits and push them for you, but I haven't done this to show more clearly what's happening here. We can add our dot file to our, redo, um, to our repo. Let's create a commit. Conf, um, and push it. There, it's off on, off on GitHub. Back to my Mac now. I can pull these changes in with the Shimmer update. Um, see what has happened. And Shimmer has pulled the changes and applied them. Uh, so it makes it very easy to share dot files between multiple machines. That on its own is not particularly interesting. 
Uh, let's look at a more interesting example. So, the .file repo contains a one-to-one -one mapping between dot .files in your home directory and files in a repo. There's no extra um, configuration file there. It's just you, um, all of the attributes of the file, uh, for example, with a private, a template, etc., cetera, uh, are stored in the file name. Dot .git config is potentially interesting. The final file is uh, git config. You can look at it, yeah. Um, but if you look at the source file, it's actually a template as indicated by the template suffix. Uh, and these curly brackets here indicate this is a, um, a template variable, and we can switch based on those um, template variables. Email was prompted me. Uh, to me when I first um, inited um, Chez Moi. Um, but you can use whatever variables you want. You can define your own. Um, and Chez Moi provides a whole load of variables you can use um, to switch the behavior from machine to machine, including architecture, operating system, uh, et cetera, et cetera. For secret management, so that's a basic template. Another example is uh, secret management. An example file might have a secret is uh, .netrc. Um, this contains a password, and it needs to be to have private permissions and a user can write it. And um, if the wish is represented with this private prefix in the source here, which means that Chimar creates the permissions correctly, and it's a template as well. What's interesting is we have we want a password present on disk, but we don't want the password in our .files repo because everyone can read that. If we look at the actual source, actually, it's also a template. But here I'm using a magic function secret, uh, which um, in this case decodes the secret. This magic function uh, can also integrate with all different password managers. Personally, I use last password, but equally you can use one pass, keychain, um, go pass, whatever you want. This way, the secrets are either encrypted or um, uh, stored in your password manager, and Shomar transparently uh, retrieves them when you need them when they actually create the dot file on disk. So that's a quick example of um, sharing config to machines. Cuckoo differences from machine to machine, personal configuration variables, and secret management uh, running on both Linux and macOS. The Shamewire has loads more to it. Uh, it's very um, nicely documented at shamewire.io with a full um, quick start, how to reference guide, etc. etc. Um, why do I think you should use Shamewire? Uh, not particularly, uh, not any other dot file manager. Well, it's very widely used now. It's got over 2.6 thousand stars on GitHub. Um, it's easy to install. It runs everywhere. It creates real regular files on your home, in your home directory, not so links into a central location like uh, GNU Snow. That means it's very easy to move from machine to machine. If you choose not to use Chamois in the future, it's very easy to migrate away, away from it. Chamois maintains a single source of truth, uh, and that single file, which is often a template, but it handles diverse machines very well has great secret management, and there's loads of extra functionality uh, which you can read about in documentation. Um, Show more under the hood. It's a single binary, uh, statically linked and, um, and cross-platform. This means there are no external de uh, dependencies when you come to install it, in contrast with other dot .file managers that might be written in scripting language like Python or, or Ruby. Um, you'll need to install the language runtime first before you can use the dot .file manager. Shamewa, single binary, no depths, runs everywhere. It integrates very well with third-party tools. By default, you can use Git. Um, use Git for your uh, repo, but it can be whatever you want. Uh, it uses GPG for encrypting files and the password manager's um, command line interfaces. It does atomic updates of files. It never writes a partial file. Um, so even if your update process is interrupted, you don't corrupt your dot files. There's a tra very transparent source format. You get a one-to-one -one correspondence between files in your source directory and files in your home directory. 
It's MIT licensed, very liberal, and it's written in Go. You can find it at github.com slash twpain slash chenoir, and the main website itself is chenoir.io. Chenoir was written to scratch a personal itch. It's been very useful for, you, for me, and I hope it can be very useful to you too. Thank you.